Today's discussion centers around the high-stakes AMC lawsuit, which is on the verge of unearthing just how deeply entrenched the shorts are in their efforts to prolong the split's resolution. The focal point of this issue is the introduction of a jaw-dropping $100 million bond, a move that showcases the shorts' determination to delay any potential financial consequences. Let's delve deeper into the implications of this bond and explore the massive increase in capital requirements that's set to come into effect, leading to yet another bailout of a major U.S. bank. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. Twitter has been buzzing with Alexander Vargas tweets revealing crucial information from newly surfaced court documents. According to these documents, Rose Izzo could emerge as a significant figurehead in the lawsuit, capable of influencing its timeline. However, there's a catch. Izzo will need to secure a substantial loan or a small bond, precisely $100 million, to act as a safety net for any losses that AMC may incur during the delay. As AMC has calculated, each additional quarter of delay results in a staggering cost of $100 million. In essence, Rose Hizzo would bear full responsibility for this expense should the court grant a stay. It's essential to understand the reasoning behind this bond requirement. When a petitioner seeks a stay of an order pending appeal, they must provide sufficient security in the form of a super sadius bond to protect the appellee from losing the benefits of the judgment due to the delay caused by the stay. This stringent condition reflects the court's view on safeguarding parties' interests and ensuring that no undue advantage is gained through legal maneuvers. The potential damages to AMC based on previous share issues over the last few years are massive, with projections suggesting that a stay on the judgment could result in losses exceeding $100 million per quarter. The magnitude of these numbers underscores the urgency of resolving the lawsuit and highlights how crucial it is to avoid unnecessary delays that could harm ANC's financial position. One cannot help but speculate about the short's motives behind their unyielding commitment to delay the ANC lawsuit. Are they genuinely concerned about the legalities? or does their fervor stem from a desire to protect their own interests? If the shorts are wholly invested in impeding the proceedings to shield their positions, it is reasonable to assume that Izzo could indeed secure the $100 million bond with relative ease. After all, the shorts have already shown their financial backing of the Allegheny lawsuit, providing significant funds for legal fees despite Allegheny's relatively minor holdings. However, the AMC lawsuit is just one facet of the financial landscape that deserves scrutiny. There are looming concerns about the increased capital requirements set to be implemented, which have recently led to yet another U.S. bank being bailed out. Citadel, with its 7 to 1 leverage ratio, has been operating with $50 billion of equity while borrowing a staggering $200 billion from Bank of America. But here's the catch should Citadel suffer a $50 billion loss, it should trigger an automatic margin call. It's possible that Bank of America might extend some leniency, allowing Citadel to lose up to $60 or $70 billion before triggering the margin call, but that comes with a risk. If the bank is mandated to hold 20% more capital due to the new Basel III capital requirements or capital proposals, it could alter the threshold at which a margin call is issued. Should Citadel exceed this revised threshold, an instantaneous margin call could be triggered. Should Citadel fail to meet the new capital requirements or capital proposals, it could find itself in dire straits, which might lead to a massive wealth transfer and significant implications for the broader financial market. Adding to the concerns, there have been reports of the collapse of another U.S. bank, Pac West Bancorp, which has recently struck a deal to sell itself the Bank of California. JP Morgan has had to step in and purchase almost $2 billion of toxic mortgages as part of the deal. This move was necessitated by Pac West Bancorp's financial instability, as evidenced by the plummeting value of its stock, 
which has seen it trade below $10 per share, a far cry from its pre-banking crisis value of $30 per share. The financial landscape remains precarious, especially for regional banks that could find themselves vulnerable to distress sales at rock-bottom prices as they grapple with the increased federal funds rate recently implemented by the Federal Reserve. The combination of stringent capital requirements and economic uncertainties is a cause for concern for both regional and major banks. As we keep a watchful eye on these unfolding events, it's crucial to note that AMC is still listed on the threshold securities list, signaling the potential for significant price fluctuations due to heightened trading activity. As of yesterday evening, AMC has officially spent an entire month on this list. The duration of its presence here, and whether the SEC will take action, remains uncertain. In summary, the AMC lawsuit, the impending increase in capital requirements, and recent bank collapses all contribute to the current volatility and uncertainty in the financial markets. The short's determination to delay the AMC lawsuit and the potential consequences for banks raise critical questions about the stability of the financial sector. As these events continue to evolve, it is imperative for investors and market participants to remain vigilant and adapt their strategies accordingly. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.